this is the black soldier fly. To many of you, this fly probably doesn't look like anything special, although to some of you, it might look a little bit like a wasp. Well, this fly doesn't fly very well, and it can't bite, and it can't sting. So its best bet for survival is to look like something a little scarier, like a wasp. Along with not being able to fly, or eat, or bite, or sting, it also doesn't eat very much, which means it's not dirty, like our more recognizable and much-loved housefly. Also, unlike the housefly, this fly doesn't fly into your house and bang against your windows. It does not sit on your food and rub its forelegs together. It doesn't carry diseases, and it doesn't bother your dogs, cats, or livestock. But, although the fly itself might be a little bit wimpy, their larvae, or maggots, are really special. And these are the maggots of the black soldier fly. They're really special because they can turn any form of organic waste into something useful. Their favorite type of organic waste is fruit and vegetable waste. This is really important because we produce tons of this type of waste every single day. The sad thing is, most of it is waste that you would never see, like that whole box of apples that gets thrown out because one is moldy, or all the fruits and vegetables that are simply too ugly to sell, so it never makes it to the supermarket shelves, or all the cuttings and peelings from that wonderful fruit smoothie you had the other day. What this means is that 40% of the food that we produce on our farms does not make it to our forks. Most of this waste ends up in landfills. Now, once in landfill, it becomes a major contributor of greenhouse gases. In fact, a third of the carbon dioxide and methane produced worldwide is produced from organic waste in, present in landfills. This can also leach out of the landfill and contaminate local groundwater. What this means is that once this waste makes it to landfill, there's less clean air, less clean water, and less food available for everyone. So, a fantastic alternative is to feed this waste instead to the black soldier fly larvae. These larvae are not picky and will eat just about any kind of organic waste you give them, even manure or sewerage, and not just fruits and vegetables. Once the larvae start feeding on the waste, they heat the waste up, reduce the smell, neutralize the pH, and kill off any bacteria that's present in the waste. What's left behind is their poop, or better known to bug experts or entomologists as frass, which is earthy smelling and can be used as an organic fertilizer. This means less waste in ending up in landfills and recovery of those lost nutrients and resources. This process of recovering nutrients through a biological system is called bioconversion. Now, once you, the larvae have finished eating the waste, they can be harvested and separated into fat and protein. The fat can be used for, to produce biodiesel, a greener fuel option, which can divert the need to produce crops for ethanol and biodiesel. The protein can be used to feed non-ruminant livestock, like chickens, pigs, and fish. Now, you might not find the idea of eating chicken that was fed maggots appealing. But think about this. Should chickens be eating fish, or should they be eating insects? Which one sounds more natural to you? And chickens and our other livestock are eating fish. Fish meal is one of the major sources of protein used in animal feed production. What's scary is it's not just generic inedible bycatch processed into fish meal, a lot of the fish that is used would actually be suitable for our dinner plates. This means that we are harvesting those fish specifically for the production of fish meal, which is increasing the pressures that are already on our oceans natural and diminishing fish stocks. The alternative to protein, unfortunately, is soya, another expensive and unsustainable source of protein. Soya requires huge tracts of land and enormous amounts of water to grow. And one of the biggest producers of soya is Brazil, where the Amazon rainforest is being burned to clear more land either for grazing or to produce more crops, like soya. Our desire for meat is insatiable as the human population races towards 9 billion people and more people are moving out of poverty and earning middle-class incomes which is further increasing our desire for meat. Another really scary fact is that a third of the arable land available globally is used exclusively to feed our livestock. 
So, a fantastic alternative is to use the black soldier fly larvae. They are more sustainable, they are high in protein, they're safe to eat, and they can even boost the immune system of the animals that are feeding on them, which can reduce the need for antibiotics in livestock production. These larvae are cheaper to produce and require fewer resources and less land, which is what makes them more sustainable. Ultimately, this will lead to a reduced need for crops for animal feed production, as well as fewer fish being taken from the ocean. Now, you might be surprised to hear that these larvae, after eating such disgusting things like manure and rotting fruit, could possibly be safe to eat. Well, these larvae really are very special, and they can kill off any bacteria that's present in the waste, including dangerous bacteria like Salmonella, E. coli, and Listeria. They also actively suppress the uptake of heavy metals like lead and mercury, which stops it from building up in the food chain, unlike with fish. They can also break down major toxins like byproducts of antibiotics and growth hormones that might be present in the manure that they are feeding on. And they can break down aflatoxins, a particularly dangerous type of toxin produced by fungi that grow on mealies and wheat. Once these larvae have finished with the waste and pooped it back out, there's no more toxins or bacteria to worry about. So, to recap this process, when the black soldier fly larvae are fed organic waste, they reduce it and recover the nutrients through a process called bioconversion. They can be separated into oil for biodiesel and protein for animal feed. And what's left behind, their frass, can be used as an organic fertilizer in farming. Ultimately, this creates a circular economy which where no, nothing goes to waste and our global carbon footprint is greatly reduced. Now, some of you might be wondering, well, if it's so great, why isn't it already mainstream? Well, this technology is still very new and many people are simply not aware of it. On top of that, there are many steps, processes and equipment that still need to be scaled up to an industrial level. It's not as simple as putting out a container of waste and waiting for the flies to arrive and lay their eggs. These flies originally come from North America, but since the advent of travel, they have hitched a ride and established themselves all over the world, including in South Africa. However, these flies only really thrive in very hot and very wet climates. In fact, one of the limitations or hurdles that you have to get over in the production of the, of the larvae is to get the flies to actually breed. It takes a lot of heat and a lot of humidity and even playing Barry Manilow to get these flies to get their groove on. <laughs> the research is promising and ongoing and this technology will become mainstream. And when it does, the question comes, will you support an initiative like this? Will you support the farms that are feeding their animals this alternative protein? Will you support markets and shops that are sending their organic waste not to landfill, but to more places that are effectively recycling that waste? Hopefully we'll be seeing more of these options very soon. Thank you very much. Thank you.